everyone. Welcome to another video. Um, sorry. I was, um, thinking about, you know, the different paranormal stuff that, excuse me, very, very, very sorry. That doesn't happen very often, but too often, in my opinion. The different paranormal activities that we have been a part of. It's actually quite interesting. There's a lot to be told. Um, not many people know about uh, Melissa and I are occultists. She is a witch. I am a wizard. We are both basically of the Celto Germanic persuasion. I am a lot more old and in darker study than she is. And we do a great deal of paranormal investigations, introductions, um, a lot of spell work. We are active witches. We first, our first, our first activity together of this kind we did down in Windyville is said to be one of the most haunted places in all of Missouri. There seems to be a great deal of tragedy for the inhabitants there, both historical and even today. There seems to be a great continuing string of tragedies that continually happen about the place. There was the tale of one, li two little boys, excuse me, two little boys that went out to play in the streets some time ago, over a hundred years ago, I believe, and they were both torn to shreds. One was found on the spot, mangled to death by some wild beast that nobody ever accounted for and the second child was never found and there are the spirits of two little boys dark haired little boy and a blonde one that habit the main street often one can be heard crying And then um, the story about the mother and her child. The child one day, this is back in the um, 1800s. One day this child was playing outside outdoors, doing what every little child would do. And they end up finding the family well. And they went and they played around it, and then they ended up falling inside it and getting killed. And the body was retrieved by the father of the family later that day. Well, the mother of the family took it so hard, she, she took to her bed for days and days, if not weeks. Could not eat, could not speak to anyone, just completely heartbroken. And then one morning she got up like she used to and she made breakfast and sent the father off to work as ship shape as ever. And then once he was gone, she went and she threw herself down the well. Her body was not retrieved, but there were stains of blood upon the top of the stone well. And You will hear at night, certain times, a crying woman. And sometimes you hear the voice, my baby, my baby, over and over. And countless 
unnamed Indian graves, most of which actually were at one time dug up and replaced to make room for buildings and parking lots. Well, the sad thing is, when graves are disrespected, the spirits, if any, that are still attached to those graves become angry. And they seek out the hurt of those who have intruded upon their space. And sometimes they seek out in anger towards anyone else who's around. There's a haunted place there that's being turned into a bed and breakfast. That's supposed to be a haunted bed and breakfast. That's part of the appeal to it. As I have done, we have done investigations in that building. And we have pictures of the walls and everything with a glowing orb. Just somewhere. Stand, like it's, it's the representation of the energy of the spirit that is residing in that place. We had voices. We've heard voices through the wall saying, help, help, or help me. And the one, time, one voice that I personally heard said, help me, I am a prisoner. Which brings up the other inhabitant of the place that I do not believe to be a spirit, a ghost, anyway. I cannot find this entity's name. It has never revealed its name to me, though. I am certain of its existence. I believe it to be a demonic spirit that is with its energy holding back many, many, many spirits of the dead. Well, we went there with all of our, with basically with our team. And one of the members basically went through all the emotions of being possessed. Difficulty breathing, the eyes rolling back in the head, the uncontrollable movements. And once we had to stop the car and he got out and he wandered around like madman. He, I thought he was going to throw himself in the river. He never officially did, though he came very close to it. We had him hold a crystal, which ended up being passed off onto one of our other members. And the crystal shattered in two, into three pieces, two of which ended up sealing themselves back together. I've now taken that crystal and I've covered it in glue from a glue gun so that it cannot shatter because from my experience I believe this crystal to harbor some form of the demonic energy and I have I want it to stay in there if that crystal breaks it opens the door for that energy to come out and to play so if I keep it sealed into the glue, it should be no problem. And once, as I said, our friend was going under, undergoing the motions of a possession and we were driving like crazy. I was muttering my, my mystic prayers and once we crossed the line the border of the town he returned to his normal self and what was really creepy about it is that at the black of night we stopped the car outside of the city limits and photographed each and every one of us to see if we were all right and everyone looked normal. We thought all of our, us looked fine. 
until the next day we examined the picture of myself. And what we had thought was me looking towards the camera, we realized instead, my face is looking away from the camera, and the face gazing back is a woman's face. I have several attached entities, guardians. I know of three of them. Only one am I aware of its name. Columbia is a female spirit that is attached to me. Possibly the spirit of some great ancestor that is watching over me. Possibly something else that was assigned to me. I know her to be benevolent and guardian-like. The other has no name. I know this to be the spirit of perhaps a great-grandfather. He is very large, seven and a half feet perhaps. His head is shaved, bald, and he is quite distinguished about his musculature. Very, very burly. And The third. Okay. So, anyone who out there who sees this, who has ever read the Harry Potter books or movies, knows what a Patronus is. A, a, a physical representation of all of the positive energy a person can summon. It takes the form of an animal. Whatever animal is most like the individual it comes from. Basically, my animal spirit that is attached to me is that of a bat. Everyone has an animal spirit. I do not quite know how to explain it as much as the natural, the supremely natural representation of what a person is if a person if a person's mentality were to be compared with an animal this is what it would be mine would be a bat i don't know why nocturnal i suppose strange and misjudged yes um i don't know most bats are basically just puppies with wings, whereas people always think of a bat as a harbinger of darkness and sucking people's blood. That is not necessarily the case. Only one variety of bat actually sucks blood, and it usually does so only from bovine animals. Cows. Pigs. And... Anyway, the, that was our first investigation in the paranormal world. We have also gone to Hidden Waters here in Marshfield. That was last night, and eyes and orbs. And this one pathway we were starting to walk down, suddenly one of our members said, this is not a good path to be going right now. Such a high sense of antagonism that we, we fairly fled the place. We, the eyes, literally glowing eyes, two sets, as well as our friend, our member Anthony had upon a previous occasion, witnessed something that was walking upright, like a human, from a distance. He saw this at night in hidden waters, and it started running, and then suddenly it dropped down to all fours, and he got the 
bloody hell out of there. There's, to our deductions, there's something and its mate that live there. I want to coin the phrase pseudo spirits, as in spiritual manifestations that can take a physical form. Whether they be werewolf, vampire, demon, leprechaun, goblin, I don't know. All I know is that all of these things exist. They're just, they're hidden. Because of the way humanity has turned the world out. They're hidden. Anyway, that basically concludes what I wanted to say. About our paranormal investigations, which if we have our official license now. Yesterday, Melissa bought it. That's why we were able to go to Hidden Watchers at night. Closes down at 8. Or, excuse me, at 10, I believe. Well, there, there it is. That's what I wanted to tell you for tonight. Or for today. Excuse me. Thank you for watching, as always. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoy making them. Um, I hope you'll watch the next one that comes out with relish. Hope you'll be excited for the next one to come out and if you are please give me a jolly good thumbs up so I know you're out there watching and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Until next time, hail and farewell.